Today on the DML News Podcast, Biden flirts with amnesty and asks Obama and Hillary for help 2024. Plus Trump attending a funeral for a falling cop in our old town. And a little message from me on a personal level. Get ready. Today is going to be a good one. And it's all unfiltered. Dennis Michael Lynch gives you his word, and he will never let you down. He will always fight for America. The only one who really puts his money where his mouth is, is Dennis Michael Lynch. Hello, I'm Dennis Michael Lynch, and I thank you for joining me today. Before I introduce my boys, let me just say right away, off the top, very important, today is the last day for the buy one, get one free for both gummies and soft gels, our two most popular products. That's right, dmlcbd.com slash B-O-G-O, BOGO. Buy one, get one free. It has been the last two weeks, everything site-wide BOGO, one of the last ones we're ever gonna do as a company, and it explains why when you go to dmlcbd.com slash BOGO, why that is. We're not going out of business. You're still gonna have CBD, but we're just not gonna be able to, under Joe Biden, to continue doing the buy one, get one free. So this is one of the last two that we're ever gonna do. Next one's gonna be in the summer. Get everything you possibly can. We are so low on soft gels, so low on gummies, we don't think we're gonna be able to get past today. So go to dmlcbd.com slash BOGO. Everything there is buy one, get one free. And remember, the gummies and the soft gels, the last day to do that is today, and the entire sale ends on Monday. Do not wait, put me on pause, go get your stuff before it runs out, and then come back. dmlcbd.com slash BOGO. Cross for me with his uh, blue shield glasses or whatever the hell those things are called. Blue light, yeah. blue light glasses is Denny. Back on the controls is Ryan. Uh, both my boys are going to the gym every single day, and they look like they're blowing up like, uh, I don't know, you guys going to go fight in the UFC or something like that? Or, or are you just looking, hey, we think we could finally take dad? <laughs> is that oh, what it is? I hate to be dark, but I think it's more we're in the age of you got to defend yourself because you can't count on the others to defend you. So uh, That's what a gun's for. Well, Thank you. <laughs> close quarter combat. Good yeah. answer. Good answer, Ryan. But you're right. You're right. And don't ever forget some of the close combat moves I've taught you over the course of time. But that's a different that's a different podcast. I, I'm going to start today's show off. Uh, I'm going to take five minutes here, maybe, maybe 10 with the video clip that Ryan's going to play. Uh, yesterday, uh, believe it or not, I was in a doctor's office with my daughter, Ashley. She had to go for a uh, to a specialist about something. And uh, while I'm there in the office with her, my phone rings. It says, Mom's cell phone. My mother uses a cell phone <laughs> uh, in, in only emergencies. And so I knew right there what the phone call was. I also got a phone call from my brother. Uh, sadly, my father yesterday uh, passed. For many of you who listen to this show on a daily basis, you know that over the weekend, uh, he was put on life support. And yesterday, God decided to take him. Uh, there is a very uh, touching, I think, uh, tribute, if you want to call it that, written on Facebook. Uh, and Dennis published it to the DML News app yesterday. If you haven't seen it, uh, please take a moment and read it. I would appreciate it. it. tells a little bit about my father. It tells a little bit about my connection with him that was 95% uh, strained. And it wasn't because of me. It was because of alcohol and other war-related uh, afflictions that all too often hit our veterans. And, uh, you know, the, uh, the crime of that, if you will, and I wonder whether or not our leaders in Washington, D.C. ever consider this. But, you know, if, if, if somebody you love, God forbid, comes down with, let's say, cancer, uh, and you watch them go through that. It's a very painful thing to watch them go through, but the real pain of it all is with the person who has the cancer. When it comes to alcoholism, I believe that disease is far different. I believe the disease of alcohol, ac alcohol alcoholism actually hurts the people you love more than it hurts yourself. And this is one of those cases. So what I have been able to do over the last couple of years, and it has really kicked in for me in the last year and a half, is through prayer, meditation, deep breathing, 
uh, and reading a book uh, that I just gave to my sons, by the way. And we'll talk about this book at another time. I don't want to give the title now because it will redirect my, my energy and thought process. But uh, I have come to a place in my life where no matter what the situation is put in front of me, I always focus on finding the positive each and every time. And that's because the negative uh, is, is a killer. Negative is... Uh, inflammation. Inflammation kills. Negative thinking, negative feeling is just an absolute downer, and I want no part of it. So in my father's passing, uh, I could have written a Bible on all the bad things that occurred and how angry I was and everything else like that. And so the only reason why I bring this up on such a personal level is because I know that a lot of people, um, you know, they they harbor bad feelings. They harbor uh, bad emotions. They, they're angry and being angry takes so much energy, uh, and it taxes the body in such a horrible, horrific way, and I will not let that happen to me. So, uh, you know, I celebrate my father's life. I celebrate uh, the, 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 the biggest part of the DNA. In fact, Ryan, just toss this up right now so people could see the photographs I post up there. Uh, there's a photograph here. It's, it's sort of like a, a three-pronged picture I put together. There's a photograph of me sitting on my father's lap. I think if you look at it, you can see uh, my face and my father's face. And then if you look at the other two at the bottom, uh, that's a picture on the left-hand side there of my father from Vietnam. And if you look at me on the right, that's a picture of me on the Kelly file. And you can see the hair is the same and the jaw is the same. And a lot of the features, the eyes and the eyebrows are the same. I, ironically, believe it or not, he looks more like my brother than he does uh, me. But even though you look at the two and you could definitely see a father and son resemblance, the greatest DNA that we shared was our love of country and our um, pride and dedication to defending it. And my father served in the Marines, and that's the way he defended the nation. And I like to believe that uh, the way I defend the nation here for the past 15 years since I first entered into doing border movies and uh, focusing on the homeless and focusing in on veterans' issues and always trying to defend uh, those who are weaker than me, whether I do that physically or whether I do that through charity, uh, I like to believe that now I am passing that down on to my, my boys and my girls. And uh, especially with my boys doing this program with me every single day. So although Denny, Ryan, myself, although we're not picking up a gun and, and going through the jungle, uh, we are defending our nation in the way that we know how. And so I'm sure my father, uh, looking down from heaven today, is very proud and has been very proud in doing that. One of the things I'd like to do here, just uh, for, for my boys and my family and for myself, and to be quite honest, for, for you, because I have received thousands upon thousands of of well wishes and condolences from uh, my supporters and followers, some of which I never even knew followed me and supported me. It's pretty hard to know a million and a half names. But when I was reading through my Facebook page and some of the personal messages I've received over the last uh, few hours, it really, really, really shows me uh, that people do appreciate what uh, my family does, what we do here each and every day, whether it's reporting the news on the app or doing the podcast here or giving to charity or even when we're making people laugh. I mean, the amount of love that I felt from strangers uh, is overwhelming. So what I'd like to do here um, is I want Ryan to play a clip. I'm going to set this clip up for you and then we're going to get right into the news. Uh, they Come to America too. Uh, is the second film that I made about illegal immigration and what was taking uh, place at the border. At that given time, it was uh, I focused in on Texas. And a large part of the film is I work with the Border Patrol and I work with a group that was assisting the Border Patrol in basically hunting down illegal aliens who were trespassing and passing through uh, different ranches in Texas in the middle of the night. And it was the closest that I had ever gotten to something that would even remotely feel like war. Uh, we were in camouflage. We were uh, on walkie-talkies. We were surrounding people. We were trying to corner them so this way we could arrest them and keep them from possibly hurting American citizens. And I remember when I was going through that thinking, my goodness, uh, you know, the person that I'm hunting down right now, they could have a gun, they could have a knife, they could be uh, a terrorist, they could be a cartel, and your heart is beating. And I did that for just one night. So I imagine what it's like if you had to do that every single day, every single minute of the day in Vietnam or Korea or Desert Storm or wherever. And so I have a, that day I had a, a far greater appreciation for what it is that my father uh, did in Vietnam. And since then, I started to do a lot of things with uh, veterans. And I've seen what veterans have to go through, and I've, I have a deep appreciation. 
Well, setting up this clip here, uh, you may recall Hurricane Sandy. Hurricane Sandy was one of the biggest storms we ever had hit the East Coast. And where my father lives in Breezy Point, New York, it's sort of a peninsula right outside New York City, and it got pummeled. And I mean pummeled uh, by Hurricane Sandy, so much so that half the place lit up on fire. Things were brought down. I mean, when I went and checked out the rubble, uh, it was almost as if I was in uh, a war, uh, a war-torn city. It looked like many times the, the the pictures you see now of Ukraine after the Russians have gone in and wiped out a city. That's what it looked like. It looked third world to the extent that it was nothing but um, ash. Uh, my father's house did remain standing, and he didn't even know I was there in Breezy Point. But I went down there to just check it out and film it out because I was in the middle of making They Come to America too, and at the time Obama was making a presence down there. And as I was walking through the lanes, uh, if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. As I was walking up and down the lanes of Breezy Point, uh, people had their garbage all and, and everything had been contaminated. It was all out in the street. And as I was walking, there was a bulldozer that was coming along and just scooping up the garbage and throwing it into a dump truck. And just as the scoop was about to pick up this uh, pile of garbage, I saw in there that there was a U.S. Marines uniform. And I stopped the truck and I climbed into the bucket and uh, I pulled out the uniform. It was all contaminated and all. And the guy said, hey, man, you know, this, this is, you're not going to want to be breathing that shit in. And I said, uh, no, 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 I got it. And I had a garbage bag and I, I put it into the garbage bag and I brought it to a, uh, a cleaner that specializes in decontaminating things. And I got that uniform all uh, tidied and, and, and perfect. And in the film, um, I'm explaining uh, how it is, uh, there was a personal part of the film, especially with uh, a woman who lost her son in 9-11, and I was talking about terrorism and how, you know, tomorrow, uh, you, don't, you don't realize that tomorrow may be your last day. And so when I saved that uniform, I didn't do it for the stranger. Uh, it took me years to recognize this. I did it for my father, and uh, I got it. And then what I did was, uh, after I, I had it pressed, I hadn't seen my father in years, and I, I drove there and we actually filmed it. He didn't know we were filming it, but I handed that uniform to my father and told him where I had gotten it from. And, um, you know, later on, he, he, had, uh, he had wept uh, because of that. And uh, I think deep down side, inside, not only was he proud that I did it, but I think he ultimately knew I did it for him. So uh, Ryan is going to play this scene, which is pretty much the final scene in uh, They Come to America. And uh, the credits will roll a little bit for a few seconds after uh, he plays the whole thing out. And, uh, and then we'll come back. My biggest regret has always been the day I quit on that baseball glove. I've thought about it for 28 years. I won't make the same mistake twice. This is a piece of the steel from the World Trade Center. And it was given to me by a firefighter um, shortly after September 11th. And I, I really, I, I wouldn't part with it. It's been hanging inside for 11 years. But I want you to have it. I want you to take this with you and know that 3,000 angels will be with you. Hey, glad to have you here. News Radio 1200 WOAI. It's the Joe Pag Show. My friend Dennis Michael Lynch will be visiting us in San Antonio after he stops in D.C. And wait until you hear what he has to say about the new immigration bill and the Boston terror attack. Tell me this. When will the politicians wake up? Hey, Dad. How's it going? Oh. Sorry this happened to you. Yeah, shit happens, man. Yeah. yeah shit happens. Well, look, I haven't seen you in a while. Um, you look right. like you lost weight. All right. So with that said, again, uh, last time, you know, as for my father, if he's watching the show, which I'm sure he's doing right now from heaven, and if heaven has a, uh, a cocktail lounge, he's probably in it right now. 
Uh, if it doesn't have one, I'm sure he's sitting with uh, John Rowland, a great, great friend of mine who I lost around this time last year. And uh, my dad used to watch him every single night on television. And um, it was pretty unique, John and I becoming such great close friends. And he was a family friend to us. And when I lost him, it felt like I, I had lost a father. So maybe the two of them are in there right now critiquing why it is that I'm wearing a baseball hat instead of a suit and tie when I'm doing a news program. That said, across from me is a guy who I think looks a lot like me, Denny. Denny, speaking of They Come to America 2 and immigration and all those other things, uh, unless you have something else you want to add to what I just spoke about, uh, don't feel obligated to, uh, what do we got here with Joe Biden and amnesty? Well, I mean, then just really quick, I definitely like all the well wishes that We've received, I mean, I've seen it on Team DML, I have saw it on Facebook, uh, just definitely very appreciative of everyone kind of, you know, giving the love and support that we weren't even asking for. It's just, you know, the goodness of their heart. So definitely appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, now we could just get everyone to talk some common sense into Joe Biden, because I have a Daily Caller uh, report here, and they're citing this out of Politico. And it's just a good representation of the warning bells that you've been ringing for a while. President Joe Biden is currently considering granting amnesty to illegal migrants in a bid to act on the worsening immigration crisis. Biden and his administration are weighing several ideas to take a tougher stance on the southern border crisis and illegal immigration amid criticisms he has thus far failed to act on either. The administration could start dolling out green cards to illegal immigrants who have long stayed in the United States, thereby giving them amnesty to stay in the country, three, three people familiar with the planning told Politico. The plan would grant migrants who have been in the country for more than 10 years access to the cancellation of removal programs, provided they, that they have relatives who would suffer if they were deported. Migrants could then receive a green card, a permanent res residency grant, if they meet the cancellation of removal requirements and an immigration judge rules in their favor. Um, I know Obama tried doing this with DACA, you know, a few years back, and I know it's saying that it's illegal immigrants who have been in the country for 10 years, but as you know, and as a lot of our audience knows, we have a lot of illegal immigrants that have been in the country for more than 10 years. So let's take a look at the surface of what this proposal um, does. First of all, it is completely illegal. That's the first thing to, to state. But so too is giving debt forgiveness to college students. And what we should be alarmed about here is that Biden and his uh, radical left friends will find some sort of little tiny loophole or something that looks like a loophole and they will run with it. And then he has the advantage of a radical court system that may actually say, yeah, you can do it. And by the time it gets to the Supreme Court, if it did get that far, remember we have to have the Supreme Court say that they're willing to look at the case, it may be the genie is out of the bottle for so many. And this would be seriously problematic, and I'm going to get into why it is problematic. But you said uh, something, and I just want to correct how it is that you phrased it. You said Obama tried to do this with DACA. He didn't try to do it. He did it. Yeah, that's a and he did it through an illegal executive order, and that illegal ex executive order was it wound up staying, and it stayed for a long time. And the problem that you have, and this is what uh, this is what Trump faced, is that once you allow these people into the country, it's hard to get them out. Once you legalize them, it is almost near impossible to undo that. And the amount of resources that it would take to undo that is something we just do not have. And the Biden administration fully understands this. The Biden administration also fully understands that once you hand over those green cards, the ability to vote is right around the corner. Now, let me just finish a few other things here that are important to state. You just said it. There are millions upon millions of illegal aliens. 
So look at some of the bullet points that you brought out. First of all, if you get this amnesty from Biden, uh, it will protect you against any deportation whatsoever. Well, first of all, I don't even know if you need this to, to, uh, to, to, to keep you from deportation because there is nobody being deported. The only people being deported are the hardened criminals. Does that mean that we're now suddenly going to, to, to say, hey, hardened criminal, we're going to protect you through deportation because you can make an argument that if you are deported, your family, who is here, are going to suffer. So forget about the fact that you are dealing in drug trade. Forget about the fact that you are doing a theft. Forget about all the illegal activity that you may have been conducting here. We're not going to deport you because if we do, it's going to leave a hardship on your children and your wife or your uh, children and your husband. So right there is a vicious circle with no end to it. And then the other thing which I think people need to understand is the greatest concern of all. When you have the millions of people that we have in here right now and you're talking about a program of this kind, there is absolutely no efficient, legal, smart way in which to process this. So what winds up happening, Dennis, is that you get a rubber stamp. Approved, 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 approved. That's the way it is. And you get the stamp. Because to not approve somebody, to deny somebody, and have them go through what would be an appeal, that process is going to take forever. It's going to be costly, and it's going to bog things down. So the incentive for the agents or whatever uh, department would process this is to hit the approve button without deep vetting. So the amount of terrorists, the amount of criminals, the amount of bad people that are going to get through this process and now have citizenship as if it comes out of a Cracker Jacks box is insurmountable when the human brain tries to figure what the number is. Right. Well, I think overall this is obviously a super desperation tactic by the Biden administration. I mean, for example, right, RFK just chose his VP choice. Now we know he has no shot of winning. So right. the real debate has become, who is he actually going to pull the votes from? And I think the only thing that you can look at as a shining light with this VP choice is that she is a young woman from uh, an Asian background. So she's probably going to pull more of that kind of minority woman vote. And if you look at her background, she is a hardcore Democrat, more so than RFK. Big time. So a lot of the different polling measures that have come out have shown that he is going to pull most likely from Biden voters. And part of now Biden's new desperation tactics is recruiting Obama and Hillary for campaigning. I think Hillary, it's because trying to get the woman vote, although, geez, and, you know, she's not really a winner by any means. And then you have Obama, probably for the minority reasons. However... As most people kind of suspect, we have the feeling of that he's the one running things behind the scenes and look how everything is. So before obviously giving your take on that, here's a quote from uh, actually a, a chief of staff of Marco Rubio's regarding that. President Trump has made significant gains with minority voters, which is why I think we will see Barack Obama earlier and often on the campaign trail compared to 2020. But I don't think Obama's appeal will transfer to Biden because blacks and Hispanics have been battered by rising gas prices, rising grocery bills, and rising housing costs caused by Biden policies. They know that they were much they know they were much better off financially during the Trump era economy. Here, here's 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 the problem um, regarding what it is that you just said there. And I wrote down some notes. I want to grab a bunch of things. There is a, uh, the house is on fire. I'm in one room. A million dollars is in the other room. You could only go into one room to save one thing. What do you save? My you family. Can, you can well, save, you can well, save me. Yeah. Or you can save the million dollars. Oh. You can't save both. Which one are you going to save? Saving you. I'm saving you're you. Save yeah. me. Okay. Sorry, I was reading something while you're doing it's this. All, it's all good. As important as the financial situation is for people, meaning as dire as it is for blacks and Latinos, 
um, in this country, the money is still going to take second place to the human interest. So remove the blacks. Go to the Latinos. The Latinos are the fastest growing demographic in the United States of America. So there's a, there's, there's, there's a, a multitude of things to point out here. Number one, with Biden's little game with amnesty, which he knows would never pass, it is the same thing as him getting on and saying, I'm forgiving all college debt. Trump would never do that. Trump's going to say, not allowed to, uh, the law doesn't allow me to do that. So automatically what Biden has done is he's taken every single person, let's just say 28 years old and younger with debt from college that has done nothing for them. Because you know and I know that when you come out of college, you can't get a job with a degree in gender studies or a philosophy or anything else like that. College is no longer a tool for getting a better job. It's a tool to become a tool. <laughs> so there is a, uh, a sense of if I just say it, they'll come and vote for me. And I bet you there are a lot. Because if you went up to a kid today who's, got, uh, who's drowning in debt and said, who are you going to vote for, Trump or Biden? That person, I would imagine, would say, I'm going to vote for Biden because he's taken away my debt. Okay. Now take it to the Latino vote. We just talked about two weeks ago, I think, on this show, how it is that Biden was starting a campaign to go into Nevada and other Latino-heavy places because he's targeting the Latino vote. He sees that the minorities are leaving him because of the financial situation at hand. So what do you do? You come back to the scenario of the burning building. Yeah, Trump is going to try to put more money in your pocket, but you're only going to have to spend that on a immigration lawyer. I'm going to give your family amnesty. So you could make the money later, but let's keep Juan, let's keep Mohammed, let's keep uh, Alexander in the country because Trump's going to deport them. So he, uh, what Joe is doing is he's saying, out of the two rooms that you can save somebody, let's save your loved one and later on, we'll bring you back to where you can make money. It's a very, very cunning, very, very smart strategy on the Biden slash Obama team because it is coming from Obama. Biden's not smart enough to think that of himself. So it is coming from uh, Obama in terms of uh, this is the strategy we need to take. And it's a very smart strategy. So this now pins Trump into a way to where he has to take an even harder stance Joe's going to give amnesty. He's going to give an illegal amnesty. And what that does strategically is it makes Trump look anti-Latino. So when the Latino who is paying $3 for eggs instead of a dollar for egg and was thinking about voting for Trump, all of a sudden gets the lure back of, oh, I'll go for Biden because I'm going to keep my kid. I'm going to keep my uncle. I'm going to keep my father, my husband, my wife in the country. Trump won't stand a chance. The money means nothing in the burning building. Last but not least, do not make a mistake here. Barack Obama and Michelle Obama are the king and the queen of the prom for the Democrat Party. I don't care what anybody says that Obama lost his appeal. That is absolute BS. Biden can't campaign. He is a train wreck. You take your all-star and you put him on the stage and when you've got Obama and you've got Michelle and all the ilk that they bring over and all they need to do is get uh, Taylor Swift to say, I'm with the Obamas on this one. She doesn't even have to stand next to Biden. All she got to do is stand next to the Obamas. You get another wave of people who cannot do critical thinking, but just go based on the trail of what's most popular and what's in style. So. Trump is up against Obama, Dennis. He's not up against Biden. He's up against Obama, Hillary uh, Clinton, and that entire Democrat radical regime. It is not an easy win. Last but not least, turn it back over to you. If we look past the Trump-Biden tickets and we look into the future, the one thing that Trump has right now that Biden doesn't is he still has the traditional uh, American, the person like you, and you are rare, the person like me, and the person like my mother, who understands that America is crumbling 
And what we've got in store for us is horrific. Not everybody thinks like us. And right now, there's still this sort of balance between who's, who's going to win that tug of war. If Trump doesn't win this election and in winning doesn't stop this side from growing, which is basically mass immigration, both legal and illegal, this side, which represents us, falls down so low that we never win another election again because the majority mindset in this country is that of the radical Democrat that I need the government to protect me, I need open borders, I need free stuff, I need, I need, I need, and that is the biggest risk we face in this election and going forward as a country. Totally. I mean, look, even the uh, Baltimore Bridge going, right? I mean, that it's, it's a domino effect, you know, because everyone's like, oh my gosh, the bridge, you know, is collapsed. What's going to happen? Well, this is what's going to happen. You're going to have delays. You're going to have rising costs because shipments aren't coming in. You know, they say the federal government is going to be paying for it instead of in the insurance company. So taxpayers are going to foot the bill. And, you know, look, I mean, you can even now make the argument it's not even safe for illegal immigrants because all the eight workers that, that fell in the water, and I think six were presumed dead, Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, they were all illegal immigrant workers. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I understand there's a lot of investigation that needs to happen regarding why that boat hit into the bridge in the first place, but I think it's just representative of the fact, like how you just said it, crumbling. And when you have infrastructure crumble, it just kind of makes a, a domino effect. And, you know, th this, I think, is a great story to just jump into. I think one of the things that Trump has as an advantage here, and we always say it, is that he is just personable and he feels human when it's compared to the artificialness of like a Hillary Clinton or the incompetence of Biden. Um, we briefly touched on this story the other day, but an NYPD officer, Jonathan Diller, he's from Massapequa, uh, also a new father of a two-year-old. <sighs> uh, yeah, he was just shot and killed Monday evening by a criminal with already 20 priors. Um, but Trump just announced that he is actually going to be attending the wake of this slain officer. So, you know, it, it's we always bash New York, and rightfully so, because a lot of the elitists like Letitia James or corrupt judges like Engeron, you know, they, they basically hate him. But... The real people of New York, I think, love Trump because of what he has done for that city, the way he has built that city over time before it became what it is today. So, yeah, he'll he'll be attending the wake for uh, Jonathan Diller. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the uh, town Massapequa, that is where Mary and I raised our family for the most part. Uh, Dennis was there his entire life up to about the ninth grade and then we moved out to uh, the eastern part of Long Island. But Massapequa, if somebody says, where are you from? Massapequa is always my go-to. It's, it's, it's what I would consider our family's originating home. Uh, it is a mix of blue-collar and white-collar workers. Uh, it is your traditional uh, all-American town with the white picket fence and the parks and the, and the, and the good schools and everything that you would always want. And a buddy of mine, a great buddy, shout out to Kevin. Uh, I was speaking to him this morning. He sent me a text saying, hey, I'm sorry about the passing of your dad. And, uh, you know, Kevin's had a little health uh, issues himself. I said, Kevin, just start walking, man. Just start walking. Start a mile today, mile and a quarter the next day, mile and a half. I said, before you know it, you'll be down 30 pounds. You'll be feeling a lot better. And he says, you know what, Dennis, I'm going to do it. Instead of driving to the funeral today, I'm going to walk. I guarantee you that when you see the ocean of people who are outside that funeral home today, uh, that is still a representation of what exists in this country. Pro-Trump, pro-cop, pro-rule of law, pro-respect for people. I mean, you got a two-year-old now that doesn't have a father because the scumbag pieces of shit in New York continue to allow criminals out on the street. And I'm talking about from the judges to the DA department, to the, to, to the officials, to the police department, to that racist SOB, uh, Mayor Adams, all of them have the blood and Biden have the blood on this cops. Uh, 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 I mean, from this cop dying, they all have blood on their hands. And you know what, Dennis, the worst part of it, 
and we should probably carry this conversation into the the private uh, end and, and and dump off social media because I'm likely or you're likely to say something that will set off the the Google alarms at YouTube and Facebook and and Apple because we're going to criticize people who are letting good Americans die for no reason because now in today's society victims are criminals and criminals are victims and it's absolutely disgusting these people who allow this shit to happen they need to be taken care of trump needs to get into office set a new agenda to where rule of law is back in charge and if you break the law if you turn a blind eye to the law because you have been given the power to do that mr judge mrs da mr uh mayor you're going to be held as a co-conspirator. That's what I think should be taking place in this country. If I were king and I could bring in two things right away, here's what they would be. You're a member of the media and you tell a lie. You're a member of the media and you omit the truth. You're a member of the media and you go into bias world. You lose your credentials. In order to be a, um, a, a member of the media, it should be no different than being a lawyer or being a doctor. You need to go to school. You need to have a license. You need to pass a test. And if you do malpractice, you're gone. That's number one. Number two, if you are a judge and you continue to let out somebody who shouldn't be allowed out, if you are a mayor, if you are a DA, and you play those kind of games, you are now a co-conspirator. Once you start holding these people accountable for the crimes that they're allowing to happen, it will stop. Those are two things that I think need to happen. Now, with that being said, let me just have you say something, and then I'm going to transfer us over. No, transfer over. Okay. Look... We are in a time right now where the greatest weapon you have is not your sidearm. It is not your fist. It is your mouth. And that's why they want to shut you up. That's why they want to keep you misinformed. That's why they're not going to put me or people like us in your feed. All right? Facebook has already said it. If you're lucky enough to be watching this right now on Facebook, I can guarantee you as much as the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, you won't see me tomorrow unless you come searching for me. They're going to keep you from us. They're going to keep you from the other people you like. Over here at Team DML, we have created an avenue to where you never have to worry about that again. Here's how it works. We have the DML News app. You can download it from f- for free from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. It costs you nothing. The news feed will always give you what you need to know. You'll never be in the midst of anything. Oh, really? That happened? Well, why didn't I know? The reason why you don't know is because you're on Facebook all day long and that's your only feed. Come get the greatest unbiased news feed that there is on any app, the DML News app. Then in addition to that, these podcasts that we do, and we do a lot of different shows. Some of the shows are funny. Some of the shows are news-based. So we got a new cooking show. We got a whole bunch of stuff that we keep on laying out and rolling out. You get that on the DML News app, at least in part. You know it's there. You're never going to miss one. And if you want to watch the full thing, and a lot of time in the back of the show is the stuff where we talk about where it's taboo on social media because you'd have you be offending or hurting somebody's feelings or you'd be showing something that's, oh, I can't see that. That's when you become the VIP. That's Team DML. Team DML is the VIP part of the DML News app. And what that gets you is that news feed I was talking about, it's completely ad-free. The second part, is that you're in a live chat with thousands of people just like you who think the same way and who want to share ideas, thoughts, and concerns without being censored. I mean, we don't let people say negative, harmful, uh, racist things. If you said something like that, you'd be gone. But in terms of debating about whether or not election was uh, straight up or not, you're not going to get kicked out because you have a question or an opinion. And then, of course, you get to see the things that we can't show, some of the videos and things of that where they should be out there, but no, that's going to get censored because it shows uh, a a certain demographic in a bad light or a certain person in a bad light. No. So you come on over, you get the full show. And when you get that news, you get it ad-free. We give no money to Google. We give no money to Facebook. So it is so advantageous. You could get a membership to Team DML for as low as $2.50 a month. Plus, it helps us stay in business now that we're not taking the ad revenue anymore from those other guys. So if you want to help us, if you want to help you, download the DML News app, go to tab five, the interact tab, hit 
the team me uh, membership, and then you go right in. Or if you're only using a desktop, go to teamdml.com. And I know that was a long explanation, but some people sometimes need the roadmap on how to get to a good place. And that's that. Also, let me say before we go on the other side to just Team DML, where the, uh, the, the video stops for the public and then it goes only for Team dmlcbd.com slash BOGO, dmlcbd.com slash BOGO. The buy one, get one free is coming to an end on Monday. And today is the last day for gummies and soft gels. So please, if you haven't done it already, do it. Go there now. All right. That's it for us. Now we go over to Team DML. Get the Dennis Michael Lynch podcast every day by subscribing on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. And download the DML News app from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store for breaking news, merchandise, films, exclusive content, and Team DML.